Yeah. Yeah. Goofy. Yeah. We are here again. We have returned. We have arrived. The ship has sailed on the western coast of California that borders the Pacific Ocean leading to Hawaii, leading to Hawaii and across that the Pacific Island shot to Haiti, shot to French Polynesia. When I get enough money in my pocket, those are three places that I am definitely visiting when I have enough, when I make a sufficient, and when I am making sufficient income from this podcast, Tahiti, Fiji, Solomon Islands, and any other in any other country that has an eye in it and rhymes with Tahiti I'm visiting. What's going on with you at Live Again, the People's Paradise Podcast? What's going on with you? What's going on? We have a turn, baby. We have a turn, baby. Bye-bye. You can tell about it. I didn't got back and come back and got them return back to the People's Paradise Podcast, my boy. All day, everything, my boy. Shout out to shout out to Roger William Projects, my boy. What's going on with everybody? How you guys doing? Um Thank you guys for listening. For those who listen to the podcast, I just recorded in my back in my bathtub. Shout out to you guys. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. There is nothing more stereotypically black, yet also stereotypically Oreo, Oreo black, than drinking sugar free Kool Aid while recording a podcast. And I also have two hot links in the oven. Which, for those who aren't aware, hot links are very very important to Afro American culture. We love hot links, nigga. We fuck with hot links. Hot links are very hot links are one of the most important staples to African American cuisine. Whether it's barbecue or rib, first off, ribs are important in every culture. I think every every culture has its own way of of fucking up a pig. But barbecue ribs in black culture, you know, I'm gonna tell. I will say this. I will say this. And I might go to this to this type of ethnic group's restaurant for my birthday in two weeks. Uh, what's, what are they called? What's their name? Brazilians. Brazilians by far make the best meat. Brazilian chefs by far prepare meat better than any other ethnic group that has the ability or has the knowledge of animals. Nigga, it is amazing. You know what I wonder? Can you eat tigers? I always wonder that. I wonder what tiger meat tastes like. Like... It's goddamn Kool Aid, so good. Although, I wonder, like, do people eat tigers? I never heard of that. That's never been a big thing. I never heard of that as, like, a big thing, like a tiger eating. It's probably because it's hard to actually catch and kill a tiger. I mean, you know, just in the process of killing a tiger, if you're doing it without a gun. See, the thing about a pig, you can kill a pig without a gun. Like, you can take a, you can, you can, you can stab a pig, to be honest with you. You can, you can fuck up a pig without a gun. This is not, this not really not necessary with, without a gun. But with the tiger, you're gonna need a gun. And you gonna need a gun that got to got some hollow. You gonna need a gun that got some shit. You gonna need to. You gonna need them type of guns that Migos be talking about. Well, what do you say? We got hundreds of rake. What do you say? We got we got we got we got we got, we got 130 rounds too. Nigga, you gonna need 30 rounds. You gonna need a 30 round for a tiger. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You know, and I love tigers by the way. Uh, this is so good. See what I did was. See, I, I bought. I did this. What I did. I got I got two sugar free Kool Aid packets, but what I did was I took the one that was like cherry flavored, and then I took the one that was like lemon flavored, and then I combined them together and made like this cherry this cherry lime like this shit was just so bomb. Mm. Matter of fact, hold on, let me get another cup of this. I'll be right back. Hold on. This is the most, this is the best thing I've ever drunk in my whole life. Mm. I lied to you that night, Taquisha. Your pussy was not better than Kool-Aid. <laughs> By the way, speaking of food, I went to Burger King and I used this, I used this, you know, you know, I told you guys yesterday, how, like I get, I get hella just miscellaneous coupons in my inbox just because my, like my mailman's a dickhead, I guess he just loved filling my mailbox up with bullshit. And I got one, I got one thing. It was like a piece. It was like a, um, a sales, like a sales app for a bunch of coupons to go to Burger King. And I used one coupon that was, they gave you two free chicken sandwiches and two small fries. Nigga, I'm going to tell you right now. 
I, I forgot. I, it is, you know, it has been a long time since I have seen Burger King in the news or anything relevant in, in, in life at all. I think we've kind of ignored Burger King. Like, and I can see why. That food was so fucking trash. That was the first time I've, that was the first time I've had Burger King in at least two or three years. And I'm going to tell you right now, Nick, it's going to be the last time I have Burger King in two or three years again. That damn first, the chicken sandwich was burnt. Fries was on point. Chicken sandwich was burnt. I went to the god dang, the dang, um, the dang, um, uh, soda dispensary machine to get some drink and it wasn't functioning. All they gave me was diet pepper and Coke. And everything else, it didn't work. Like I just, I was very, I was very displeased. I, the only, the only reason I'm, the only reason I'm, the only reason I'm not going as hard as I should on this terrible establishment, this terrible attempt at making fast food, is because the people who were working there, the cap, the cap, the um, cashiers, were actually pretty nice people. They were actually pretty kind people with with pretty faces too. I'll be real with you. Shout out to the pretty Mexican woman who lives with her three mile radius. Bro, this cool is <laughs> oh my god but um yeah man i want to tell you guys so um netflix hour netflix hour let's talk about netflix last night on netflix i watched Con- contracted i watched a movie called contracted and right now i'm in the middle of watching one film that's i forgot what it's called but it's a danish film it's another danish there's a lot of good danish films out there bro it might not even necessarily be danish it might be another scan it might be in another Scandinavian language, I'm just calling it Danish, but it's one where the where this one where the movie set somewhere in a in proximity to the glaciers to the glaciers, and the glaciers are melting, and because the glaciers are melting, some new parasitic disease is developing that like infects like foxes and wolves, humans, etc., and like turns them into basically a, like a hybrid of between hybrid between Whoopi Goldberg and the aliens from Alien vs. Predator and it's weird like they're just so creepy it's, 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 it's an interesting movie I don't know if I'm gonna finish it just because I, I it, it, ain't, it ain't really it ain't, it ain't really catch me like that but I'm like I'm, 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 I'm gonna come touch back on it Um, I'm watching that I checked out this movie called Contracted Contracted wasn't necessarily the best movie but I think it's a good movie you should definitely check out that film it's this film about this young lady. She had a party. Her friend told her to come to this party. Her girlfriend, she's gay, didn't want to come. She goes there alone. She ends up having a one night stand with this one random dude who, you know, was so average in appearance. Come to find out, I guess he's passing on. He's passing on a virus form of of becoming a zombie, like the virus for becoming a zombie. And so she's slowly becoming a zombie, slowly, 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 but surely can becoming a zombie. Not slowly, actually pretty fast, because I think she died. The whole process of the movie happened within like seven days. And it was, it was really, it was really, it was really sad. I, I had so much sympathy for that girl in that film. You know, that was a good movie. Yeah, I'm going to stop hating. That was actually, that was a good movie. That was, that, that was a good movie. And I recommend that people watch that film. That actually was a, that actually was a pretty good film. I recommend that to anybody that was a good one, Contracted. Now, they made us Contracted too. I haven't watched it just because I saw the reviews and they said it was pretty stupid. They said the reviews were pretty bad. Now, I will say it's, I will say it's not usually good. It's not usually good to go off of reviews of a movie. I would, it, it is good to go off of reviews of a movie, but I still think it's better for you to go see the film and, and inform your own opinion about the film because a lot of the times, a lot of what the, the critics of the film think about a film is different because their tastes are different. You gotta understand, these are people. A lot of the time, when you go on Rotten Tomatoes and you see the reviews of people from Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, give these are people who they've they've actually went to school, or they went to film school, or they studied film and film working, screenplay writing, um, light camera light camera functioning. They these are people who are these people have fine tuned these people. These are people who have fine tuned. Who have fine tuned what they think is a good film so much that they that their expectations of a film not even be the might not even be the general consensus of what most people think is a good film. You know, prime example. Like I give an example. When I went to see Fences um, in, in in December, I went to see Fences. I, to, I always tell the story. I think it was December twenty sixth. I went to go see Fences and Assassin's Creed. I saw them both at the same time. And Fences, I could tell it was a good movie, but it just didn't catch me. I, I could I could tell it was a good movie. I could tell Denzel Washington laid down, laid laid it down in the film. His acting was good. I think Viola Davis was all right. The little black dude, he was all right too. But me personally, I just the film didn't catch with me. Now, Assassin's Creed, mind you, 
See, the difference between the two was Fences was widely panned as one of the greatest films to ever be made in the last 35 years of film. Everybody came, nigga. The, the one dude from Roger and Ebert who's still alive, I don't know if it's Roger, I don't know if it's Ebert, they said it was a good film. Everybody said it was a good film. Like, everybody was just on Denzel, hanging from Denzel Washington nuts and hanging from Wild Dot Vival Davis's lips, talking about, oh my God, this is the best film of all time. Da, 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 da. I didn't really enjoy it like that. Versus when I saw Assassin's Creed right after that, I, you know, no, 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 I saw Assassin's Creed first, versus when I saw Assassin's Creed first, I really enjoyed Assassin's Creed, and I enjoyed it so much that I even watched it again, like, it was, a, I thought it was a really dope film, now, it might have been because in that moment, after watching Assassin's Creed, action, action Assassin's Creed was an action-faced movie, I love action, I love seeing movies where niggas is getting stabbed, so, for, oh my, you know, I'm gonna be real with you, so I gotta tell you this story, I gotta tell you this story, so, they're making a new Assassin's Creed, right, this Assassin's Creed is set in ancient Egypt, and the lead character, the dude who's the assassin in this film, he's a dude from a tri- from a Nubian tribe called from a Nubian. Tri- yeah, my poster fell down. Hold on, hold on. Uh, hold on, my poster fell. Uh, no, no, damn this wall, putty. Damn, damn this wall, putty. Okay, so, and in this Assassin's Creed is set, in this Assassin's Creed, in this Assassin's Creed is set like in a world where the guy, the lead character, he's the leader of the Magi tribe. The Magi tribe, for those who don't know, actually was a real tribe, was uh, descended from the Nubians of, it was descended from, you know what Sudan is, have you ever heard of Sudan, that poor ass country where there's a lot of tall ass black people, like all the black people from Sudan, like hella tall and shit with pretty lips. So, the Nubian, the new, before it was called Sudan, it used to be called Nubia. And they used to have a warrior tribe they called the Magi. They actually were royal guards for Egypt and also mercenaries. I, and I actually wrote a story about them four years ago. I've been writing it over and over again. Actually, And I was actually, I ended, I ended up taking that same concept that I had written for it a while ago and reworking it into a story that I put on Wattpad, which if you guys want to go see my Wattpad, I put the link to my Wattpad in this video description on YouTube and, to the, link to, and the link to it in this uh, podcast. So if you guys want to check it out, you know, check it out. Um, with that being said... I put it there, man. I I put it there. I've been working hard on it, nigga. Two years later, nigga. I mean, two three years later, I couldn't have found an Assassin's Creed. They did like I did three years ago. I did this three years ago, but they did it now, and now it's going. Everybody's going to see it. They revived the concept of the Magi tribe and put it in and merged it with Assassin's Creed. And I'm low key kind of pissed off because I'm like, bro, like I've been did this. Like I did this a long time ago, and it's like, and you know, you know. It just made me mad. You know, granted, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, my shit's way doper than theirs. Like, when I tell you, check my shit out on what, check, I'm going to tell you what, I got two stories, I got two stories linked to the concept of the Magi tribe in Nubia. Check out the one called Black Sun on Wattpad, and check out the one called the, um, the Caliphs of Spain on Wattpad. My shit go hard in the fucking paint. Niggas can't fuck with me when it comes, when it, see my writing, my writing game first off, first off, my pin game rough. Round of applause for JT. Let me tell you about my pin game. My pin game. My pin game. Keep, 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 keep moving. Uh, my, my pin game is nice. Now, with that being said, I think that I think that my pin game is good. And I, as far as uh, I, there, 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 there are other writers out there who have a better wordsmith game. Who are better wordsmith? They are really better connecting verbs and consonants and adjectives all together. But nigga, when it comes to creating a great story and creating a great concept, you can't fuck with me on that, bruh. You can't fuck with me on that, bruh. I'm I'm the best at it. I'm the best at it. Act your ass out. I'm the best at it. No one can stop me. So, to a certain extent, to a certain extent, I was a little pissed off about that. I I ain't gonna lie to you. I was a little ticked about rap, but you know, I have nothing against Ubisoft. Ubisoft is the creators behind Assassin's Creed. You guys were doing that. You probably don't even know my story. You probably you have you probably have no idea who the fuck I am. I actually tried to get I actually tried to interview the um the screenplay writer for the God of War 1, 2, and 3 on my podcast last year, but you know, you know, through a series of events, she couldn't it was she couldn't we couldn't get it scheduled. Or in other words, she I wasn't popular enough for her to respond, you know, you know. Okay. That's why she ain't gonna be able to have it on my Kool Aid. Now, um, <laughs> now, <laughs> that's my that's every time I get mad at somebody for ignoring me. Every time I get mad at an influencer or a screenplay writer or somebody who I want to bring on the podcast, I'm just gonna say that you know, hey, that's why um, that's why she ain't gonna be able to drink my Kool Aid. Now, that being said, mm. 
you know what? This is good. <laughs> I'm over here drinking this diabetic Kool Aid, thinking that's hell all that dope. If, 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 if there was somebody in here of true black blood, who, if, there was, if there was a real Negro in here to really trying to drink, they would shit on me for drinking sugar free Kool Aid. But I don't give a damn, man. This Kool Aid go hard in the paint. Like it's it's literally the best I've had. I I, I think I think I, I think I'll dip myself personally, but you know, hey, but you know, hey, that's just my own that's just my own personal opinion and my great and my and my and my and my and my talent of. In, in my talent of juice preparation, um, but yeah, outside of that, uh, nothing else happened, man. I um, I'm gonna talk about the day. Um, shoot, saw a girl I liked today. Saw I saw two girls I liked today. It was one, one, one I didn't get her name. One I didn't get her name. She, she, she just she works in the bar nearby me, and I see her go in and go out sometimes. And she's so, she's so cute. She just is so cute. You know, she just has a she just has a really pretty face. Mm. I'm a sucker for a girl who has a round face and it's pretty. Like now I'm talking about like these round I like I don't like those fat face, but like a round pretty face. Not like a fat, fat face. Like you know you know what I'm talking I don't like explain it. Like I I'm, but then I'm a sucker for any type of face. You know a pretty face is a pretty face. I'm a sucker for any type of face, you know. To all the girls out there rectangular with who are pretty but have rectangular shaped faces, you still have a you still have a chance. You still have a chance. You still, you still have, you still have a chance. The world is not ended. You still have a chance. It is not too late to put in your ad, to put in your, put in your submission slip. It is, it is not too late. You still have a chance. Um, but yeah, not a podcast. But now, um, oh yeah. By the way, I started singing. I ain't starting. I'm starting. I'm starting, I'm starting to sing now. And I, I will always love you. And I, 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 I will always love you, and I will always love you. I have a karaoke moment. So I, I had time to have fun in this podcast in a while. And I, 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 I will always love you, and I, 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 I will always. Love you, I will always love you. Yeah, podcasting on the day. Blue microphone in hand. Tell how to dance. Teach me how to dance. Mm-mm. Send me to France, Mm-mm. where's Venice, Italy, maybe it's a place I'ma be, I'm moving to Monaco, next year you'll see soon, I'm not gonna be broke my whole life, one day I'll make enough money to get out of this strife, ooh, ooh, I'll make enough money, get out of this bullshit, if you don't believe me, then get out of my podcast. Podcast is on top. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's a hit single. That's a hit single. It's coming out on Universal Records, August August twenty ninth, two thousand seventeen. My album is gonna be called Seventeen Rockets. Hit Bill Maher in his side of his face. You know, shout out to Bill Maher. I don't, I don't mean to insult Bill Maher. Actually, I'm a fan of Bill Maher. Despite everybody was trying to tear him down, calling him a racist and shit for that joke he made two months ago, which was that 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 house nigga joke was hilarious. I died laugh. I died laughing when I heard that. Y'all niggas call me yeah, Uncle Tom if you want to. I heard that house nigga joke and I died laughing. Sir, I am a house nigga. I sure had me so that had me so weak. I don't think he should say it again, but at the same time. I don't think it was that serious. Like, I think I think everybody overreacted. Because, I mean, for one, it wasn't like he was calling somebody a house, nigga. He was being self-deprecating. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. People are just too sensitive. I don't give a damn. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. You know, hey, it is what it is. You know, hey, it is. Be sensitive. Be sensitive. Drink the sensitivity. Drink the sensitivity. Get, bring, drink the sensitivity Kool-Aid and have fun with that. You know, it is what it is. Um, with that being said, I got some sausages in the oven. I got to take those out and check on those. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you all. I know this is a short episode. Lately, I've been doing short episodes, but it's just because, to be real with you, you know, people haven't been listening, and so 
I'm doing it now because I'm having fun and I really want people to listen. I do believe in hard work, but at the same time, you know, you know, I, I do get, I do, I don't know. I've been, I've, I've been depressed a lot lately just because I just, I don't know, I've been, I've been feeling depressed because I've been feeling like the podcast has been going nowhere and I've been feeling like nobody listens to me and I feel lonely and I feel ignored and I feel like the world just doesn't want me to be successful. I feel like the whole world is just marshalling against me and just stomped me ground the dust saying nigga you can never be happy fuck you and your buck teeth which you know you know when i get when i get my first few four or five checks for the podcast on youtube that's the first thing i'm fixing is my teeth that that is immediate and um i don't know i just i just that just kind of um it kind of um it messes with me mentally and it messes with my pride and messes with my emotions a lot of the time because I'm kind of like, you know, like I, I have faith in my time as a broadcaster. I know for a fact, outside of Mickey Mouse and the Green Frog from the Muppet family, there's nobody more entertaining than me. And, you know, I, I just know for a fact that I'm destined by Allah to be the top entertainer, top broadcaster in the game. And, if, you know, I just I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like, you know, you know Goofy understands me. You know, for those who wonder why I always had this Goofy with me, Goofy is an extension of me because I'm a Goofy person. I'm really Goofy. I'm really obnoxious and extra all the time. And so I've always, I've always used Goofy. I've always used Goofy as like a, as a, as an outside expression of who I am as a person. Like I've always used Goofy, Goofy as a way to express who I am and who JT is. Just because, you know, we're both tall, lanky, black, Goofy. We have, we have a terrible teeth game. Like both our dentists need to be fired. But at the same time, People love us. People love us. People love us and people fuck with our movement. So, with that being said, this has been the People's Paradise Podcast. It was crazy talking to you guys. How you guys doing? Love you guys. Much love. Peace and chicken grease. Thank you for listening to the fam. Thank you for being a part of it. Signing off. <laughs>